Happy New Year's, my dear viewers, and welcome to 2021. We have put 2020 behind us, even if it feels a bit more like a symbolic victory than anything right now. And the turning of the new year marks a good time to pause and take stock. So to that end, I present to you my recap of my projects in 2020 and my look ahead to the year 2021. I will start by saying I made a big shift this year, and not just this big shift. I'm sorry I couldn't help myself. If you had asked me in January of 2020 if I made clothes, I would have shaken my head and told you that I was a quilter. Mostly art quilts. I'd been quilting most of my life and just didn't understand garment fitting or 3D construction. It felt like a mystery to me. But I really love wearing waistcoats, and I can't find them that fit me the way I want. Even this one isn't quite right. So I decided I wanted to learn to make one. Like any good sewist, I started with a mock-up that was way too small. So then I slashed and threaded my pattern, just like the Craftsy tutorial told me, and it was way too big. And a couple tries later, I got frustrated and decided, okay, maybe I needed to start somewhere simpler. So I made myself a tunic top. It came out right, but I wasn't really happy with it and this would happen with several of my garments this year, but at least I learned from it. After that, I made a skirt, and I even successfully put a zip in after only three tries. As I got better, I tried making a dress form, which was too big, and then I made a second dress form, which was also too big, and then I learned that the 5 eighths of an inch mark on my sewing machine isn't actually at 5 eighths of an inch, it's much closer to half an inch and suddenly a lot of things made sense. After I finished my dress form, I tried my first historically inspired piece, a walking skirt based on the truly Victorian 1890s walking skirt pattern. The inside of this is horrible and I'm still not ready to show it to you, but as far as it goes, it's a pretty great skirt. I even figured out how to do all the gathering at the back. Then the walking skirt needed a blouse, so I made one of those too. It was a fitting nightmare, but I finally got it right. And because I still didn't have a waistcoat, I decided to make a pinner apron to go with my outfit. I had never done cartridge pleating before, and so I learned how to do that. I also tried a couple less successful things, like a slip dress made out of charmeuse that ended up first in project timeout, thinking about what it's done with its life, and then eventually at the trash can. I didn't know how to cut slippy fabrics, and so my pieces came out irreparably wonky, to use the technical term. I had the same problem with trying to make a silk bathrobe. I made an adorable house dress that came out too big. From this I learned that I needed to fit the pattern in my shoulders and then grade out to my waist. Otherwise, my shoulders would just fall through the neck hole. But I also learned how to do French seams on that project. I'd never done those before. Another adventure I went on was learning how to sew with stretchy knits. I had super never done that before. I was terrified of them, but I wanted to make my own underwear. There's nothing historically accurate about them, but I learned how to use the zigzag stitch on my machine. I don't have a serger. As I was learning how to do these things and trying and sometimes succeeding and sometimes failing, I was also watching CodsTube a lot. I loved seeing other people's projects, but it was also kind of terrifying. It didn't seem like anyone was having the same problems I was having, or they were way past that and I was never going to get there. So in July, I started a YouTube channel documenting my own sewing journey as someone just learning how to make garments. I really wanted to make this approachable to those of us who are just starting out and feel really alone in making our own rookie mistakes, like ending up with a house dress that your shoulders fall through. That's also when I started my history bounding capsule wardrobe idea. I had fallen in love with the idea of history bounding, but I really needed a place to start. And as I talk about in that video, a capsule wardrobe really seemed to make the most sense. In October, I really got the YouTube thing figured out and started posting on a regular schedule. And that's when I both got to introduce my capsule wardrobe idea and start making my first capsule wardrobe skirt, the shortened version of the 1890s walking skirt. The channel also opened up some ideas I'd never thought of, like historical Halloween 2020. I had a blast with that one. I got to make a hat, which is something I've definitely never done before, and I got to do applique, which 
as a quilter, I was really experienced with and loved getting to do. I also made a couple of additional skirts. I didn't document these because I just needed new clothes. Most of my wardrobe was exactly one pandemic ago, and so the things I had didn't fit. The only reasonable answer to that was obviously to make myself some fantastic new clothes. So I did. In the summer, I cut out a mock-up for a shift. I got to the point where you had to gather the front into the yoke and got overwhelmed. I'd never done gathers before. When the Home for the Holidays collaboration rolled around, I decided to give it a second try. And now with my new confidence from having tried a whole bunch of things, I sailed through the gathers with ease. I also learned a ton about clipping and easing opposite curves in that I didn't know before. And for the first time I got to play with things like lace and doing pin tucks, all of which I loved. My final project this year was a mock-up for the Foundations Revealed competition. It very much feels full circle because it looks like the vest mock-up that I couldn't figure out at the beginning of the year. But this time I knew exactly what to do. I still haven't made my own waistcoat, but that brings us to 2021 and our look ahead, and a little bit that I want to talk about in defense of failure. My first project this year is finishing my Foundations Revealed competition piece. I'm not sure it's going to get done in time, but either way, at some point we'll have a video on a fantastic Sleeping Beauty inspired tea gown. I'm also going to continue our capsule wardrobe. Next, we have to make a blouse, and then another skirt, and then I think we're going to finally tackle that waistcoat. I'm also planning to work on some costume pieces for Costume College. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but if it does, I'd like to be ready for it. And if it doesn't, I'm going to need a fantastic outfit for mooning around the house in. This will probably involve a corset, but we'll see. On that, I do want to pause and ask. If I do make a costume, inclusive of foundation pieces, corset, skirt, whatever it needs, is there interest in tutorials on that as well for beginners? Do you or do you just want to see the process, or maybe just the finished pieces? Let me know in the comments. Another project I think we have on the docket is the Hamilton Spencer. There's going to be a March sew along, and it'd be really nice to get to participate in that as a channel. I'd also love to see what everybody else makes if you're participating in it. In looking back at 2020, some of my projects didn't work out, and some were pretty awful. At times I thought I couldn't do this and I wanted to quit. The slip dress couldn't even be sewn together because charmeuse is woven from pure slippery evil and the pieces had walked so much during cutting that they were too small and too wonky to make into anything. But even that was successful in some way. One of the things I learned was how to use tissue paper to cut slippery fabrics and when I needed it for my foundations revealed competition piece, I knew what to do. From my house dress, which I'm still sad I can't wear, I learned that I really do need to pick the pattern according to my shoulders and then grade to my waist. I want to pause here for a moment and defend my failures. Things didn't work out because of techniques I didn't know or things I didn't know how to do yet. And while I did my best to research the way to do things and watch YouTube tutorials, sometimes we don't know the right way to do something until we've done it the wrong way. And sometimes this is a painful and frustrating lesson, but it's how we get better. We learn by doing. I often hear people say, I could never do that. That's above my skill level. But most of the projects I took on were above my skill level when I started. But I do that because that is how you get to the next skill level. You don't make the same skirt over and over again in hopes of learning how to fit a bodice. You try to fit a bodice. And you keep trying until it makes sense and you can do it. If you are failing, it's because you're pushing yourself and learning something new. If you're not failing, it's because you're doing the same thing over and over again. Celebrate that. Celebrate that you are doing the hard thing. Even if all you learned today was another way how not to do the thing, you are one step closer to learning how to do the thing. And this isn't just in sewing, this is in everything. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions for a number of reasons, but especially not this year for all the reasons. But I do want to encourage you to think about trying things that are too hard and embracing failing. It doesn't mean you did badly. It means you reached further. And even trying something new is its own success. It's scary. That's a hard thing to do, but you can do it. And you could always surprise yourself by just how well you did. So what are you interested in trying that you have been afraid of? Let's make this the year of trying new things and of recognizing that even in failing, we have successes and that we've succeeded by trying. One quick housekeeping note before I leave you. 
As I mentioned in my last video, I plan to start uploading twice a month. I'm thinking the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. My current plan is to post one capsule wardrobe video and one other sewing related video, something like this, or historical costuming. Really just kind of anything that's sewing related. At some point I actually need to do a studio tour and get it cleaned up. Things like that. I would love to get your input on that, my dear viewers. What would you like to see? Are there things I've talked about that you want to see more of? Or do you just want more capsule wardrobe? I know I've asked for a lot in the comments, but I'm looking forward to getting to read it all. And I've been really thrilled by the comments I've gotten so far. Thank you so much for everyone who has watched this channel and subscribed and liked my videos and interacted with me since I started. I can't tell you how meaningful it is to me and how excited I am to get to continue that in the coming year. With my deepest and sincerest appreciation and all of my hopes for the coming year for you, I remain, as ever, your faithful servant and 21st century Victorian, Frances Worthington.